Hey guys, and welcome. Much better. Welcome to the 3D Animation Hub. I'm Brian, a 3D animator in Toronto, currently working on a Netflix epic using Blender. In our last video, we covered what you need to know if it's your first time in Blender, more specifically if you're switching over from Maya. And we actually got a lot of comments from people that are Blender users that actually learned something new from that video. So if you haven't checked it out, please go check it out. It'll cover all the basics you need to know if you're new to Blender or the animation side of Blender. So in this video, not only are we gonna talk about my workflow, but how I learned to be efficient and fast using Blender at a professional level in a short period of time using the power glove. Let's, this will probably have more effect. Using the power. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Using the power glove. <laughs> Please don't be broken. <laughs> yeah, it's not actually called a power glove. It sounds cooler though, so we're going with it. Now before we hop in, I just want to give a quick thank you to my beautiful patrons. Thank you guys so much for your continuous support of the channel. Thank you for your help in increasing the channel's quality. And I, as you can see, I, I just bought a new cam, it's a webcam. I just bought a new webcam. It's like the most expensive webcam on the market. So let me know down below if this is better or the quality of my previous videos are better. If they're better, then I'm just gonna return this. <laughs> So anyways, if you also like to help the channel out, if you also like to support the channel, there's a link down below to my Patreon. You'll also be getting the goodies that come with it, including every upload I make to Gumroad. If that's not something you can do, then I appreciate you smashing that like button just as much. Okay, enough ramble. Let's jump in. When you first jump into Blender, you'll notice that a lot of animation keys are actually separated around all over the keyboard. And this really hinders the speed of your animation. It really slows things down. And we don't want that. Now, there is two ways to go about this. Way number one is if you just remap your whole keyboard. So an option people brought up in my last video was, hey, why don't you just switch it to the Maya layout? Well, the reasoning for that is if you switch it to the Maya layout and it changes all your keys and it makes it similar to Maya and not like Blender, it'll be very, very hard for you to follow tutorials if you want to watch any. Or for example, if you work at a studio, they're most likely not going to be changing their layout. They're going to be using the Blender layout. And so if you have a lead or a supervisor come over, they want to show you something or they want to change something on your shot, they won't be able to because they wouldn't understand your layout. It wouldn't be the layout they're used to. It's really important to keep your layout as is with minimum changes. And that's where the second way of doing this comes in. Now with this method, you're kind of hitting three birds with one stone. No birds were hurt in making this video. So with this method, you have all the keys you need in one cluster reachable with one hand. So that improves workflow. It's a faster way of relearning an entire new program. It'll be much more consumable and much more doable in a shorter period of time. And you'll have the ability to actually place your keys where where it, they would be on your hand when using Maya. So it'll be very close to Maya if that's where you're coming from. And on top of all that, you keep your original keyboard and your original key mapping so you can follow tutorials easily and when your lead comes over, there won't be any problems. So when I first started on my company, everyone had one of these and I had no idea what they were. I was really confused. And then after a little investigation, after figuring out what they used it for, what their hotkeys were, I ended up making my own hotkeys that are suitable for my workflow. So I'm gonna be sharing what I have with you guys in a second, but it may not be the best for you. So this will just be your starting ground, just so you know what's, what's possible. And then you can make your own hotkeys, your own setup for the keyboard that's best optimized for you. So the keyboard isn't actually called the Power Glove. It's called the Razer Tartarus version 2. Just so there's no confusion, you wouldn't be Googling Power Glove. I'll have a link for it down below for you guys. I'll also have a link to the, my key mapping for the keyboard down below in the description. So before we start setting this up, I'm going to hop into Blender. I promised in my last video that I'd show you guys my way of animating in Blender. Now, I'm not going to go into necessarily, you know, an animation tutorial, but I'm just going to show you how I set up my Blender to start animating. The animation tutorials will come later. This is going to be more of a setup video and not a tutorial for se. So in Maya, you're used to your W being this right here, your E being this, and your R being that. And instead, what you have right now is this. So we're just going to make minimal changes. What we're going to do is we're going to change our W, E, R to move, rotate, scale. That by itself should get the ball rolling for you. So we're going to go ahead and come here to this bar right here. I'm clicking on the move button and here you can right click and assign shortcut. Now I'm going to press W and that's that. Now when I can click on a controller, I can just press W and it goes to that. So the same thing for rotate and scale. We're going to come down to rotate, right click, assign key, 
E. Scale, same thing, assign key, R. Another thing I'm gonna do is, uh, this is something I'm used to in Maya, is to get rid of the controllers you see here. I don't wanna see this per se, let's say I just wanna see how the animation looks, and I don't wanna see my controller. So there's two things you gotta do here. First is go up here to this little arrow, bring it down and uncheck move rotate and scale now when we go to box select up here you don't see all three rotate scale and uh, move option they, they, they're gone and so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna right click and assign shortcut to the box select and i'm gonna press q that's just a key i use what now what, what we have is when i press w we have move e rotate r scale and when i press q it gets rid of that and then w e r q all right, now I'm gonna show you the wonders of the Power Glove. So aside from just setting keys on it, and for example, you know, um, I don't know, N, Delete, E, you can also set actions. So what you can do is you can record an action. For example, you can press GX or GY, uh, G is to move. So it will be move on the X axis, move only on the Y axis. You could set that as an action and have that as a key. So what we have here is we have GX. So I press one button and it's like I press G and X and I use that to the max. So we have G, Y, we have shift E and I'm going to go through all these one by one, but just that's also something else that's possible with this. If you guys have trouble setting up actions or you want a tutorial on it, let me know down below in the description. But right now we're just going to cover the keys that I have on my keyboard and what they do. Okay, so I'm going to try and record what my hand looks like right now. And I'm going to show you guys again. All the keys we're gonna be talking about here will be down below in the description for you guys to download. So don't worry about that. Uh, but essentially, my first key in the top left is escape, which is self-explanatory. My number two is the squiggly line in the top left of the keyboard. And for me, the squiggly line, I've set it so it turns off the overlay. So when I click it, all the controllers on a rig disappear just so I can have a clear view of the mesh and just the mesh. Number three for me is N and, and of course N opens and closes your attribute editor or whatever add-on you have here like my screencast. So I downloaded this thing due to uh, popular demand in my last video. You guys asked to have a screencast so you can see what I'm pressing on my keyboard. So number four we have delete. It's just self-explanatory. That's for deleting keys or deleting stuff off of uh, the outliner. Number five is Alt-S, which is just to save. And for me, as, as you guys remember, so number six is Q, number seven, eight, and nine is W-E-R. So this is exactly how I have it set up in Maya. So if you guys remember, uh, that's W-E-R, and then Q is set to get rid of whatever controller is up. And then lastly on that, on that second row, our number 10 is I, which sets a key for us. So for me, I have W-E-R and then I can just press 10 to set a key. And it's all right there within four fingers. Oh, you guys can see this within, within four fingers. So next row, we have shift. So I actually have shift in two different spots. This one, I don't really use so much. So we're just gonna skip it for now. I'll get back to shift a little bit later. Um, over here on number 12, we have A. A is to there's a little fly flying around my room. A is to select everything. So for example, if I had, let's go to, uh, let's go to pose mode here. I can just press A and I select, it selects all of my controllers. I can come into the graph editor, press A again, selects everything, selects everything. Then I can do as I please. Or I can just come down here into the timeline, press A and it selects all of the keys. So it's just in whatever panel you're in, it just selects everything. We're making our way to uh, number 13 and number 14. So now for number 13, I have this set to GX, which just moves whatever controller in the X axis. And number 14, it moves it in the Y axis. Okay, so this is super, super handy when I'm in the graph editor. Let's say for example, I'm messing around with the graph here and I just want to move this one frame over. If I just grab this and I take it over, it could go up and down, it could go left and right. I have very little control over it, but let's say I don't want to move up and down. I just want to go left and right. So I'm going to press my number 13 and I move it. See if I, even if I go up and down, nothing happens. It just moves just on the X axis. I'm going to click. So that's what that's for. And number 15 for me, the third row, last on the third row, this is essentially a tweener from Maya. So I just press my number 15 
and now I can go back and forth between the other two frames. So it's just borrowing from, you know, if we're on this side, it's borrowing from frame one. If we're on this side, it's borrowing from frame 10. So just like a tweener. So this right here, um, the bottom row, first key on the bottom row, number 16. For me, that is the delete button or the period button on the number pad. So what that does is essentially like pressing F in Maya, it focuses on whatever controller you have selected. And the number 17 for me is control C. Again, we set it as an action, so it presses control and then C. Number 18, control V. And number 19, it's control, oh sorry, shift control V. And if you guys remember my last video, we talked about how that you can reverse paste. So for example, if we take this pose right here, I'm copying it and then I'm going to frame 25 and I'm gonna shift control V it. And what this does, it pastes it in reverse. If you control V, it's like this. Control shift V is completely mirrored. And this is super cool in my opinion. Now we're just making our way to the last few keys. Hopefully you're bearing with me. Now for me, the wheel scrolling up is essentially like clicking the right arrow and scrolling down is like clicking the left arrow. So I can just scrub through my animation by just by just scrolling this, I can just scroll through my timeline, going back and forth. If I press down on it, that's like pressing space, and so it plays the animation. So I can play the animation, pause it, go frame by frame, very, very easily by just using one finger. Now we're reaching the last two keys. So for me, this key is the shift key, and so for me, I use shift to move things very delicately. For example, if I'm moving this, and I just want to move it very, very precisely, very, very slowly. I can just hold shift and now it starts moving at a way slower pace. And of course I use it for moving around my uh, camera as well. I'm just holding middle mouse and shift and that does the job for me. And it's all just my thumb right there. Super, super easy. And this right here is my delete macro, but really what it is is control Z. So I can just come here and press it. And that is just, that is literally just control Z. Now, another cool thing about this is that you actually have profiles. So you can save a profile for Blender, save a profile for Maya, and try and have the same sort of keys for both programs. The closer the keys are together, the easier it is on your brain, and so there's less of a brain relearning when you switch between programs. When I was working with Blender the whole day, then I was teaching Maya after work, it was really hard going back and forth until I, until I got the Tartarus V2, uh, <clears throat> the Power Glove. So when I got this, I, I didn't really have to think about it too much. I just set my keys close to Maya and now I have a super easy time going between the two programs. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm like, I'm tempted to use it for gaming as well. Maybe I, maybe I will and I'll let you guys know. But I feel like if you could set macros and you know, you have all your keys so accessible to one hand, it just, it makes things a lot faster and a lot easier, whether it be in gaming or in animation. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, hit the sub button, stay notified of future videos. I honestly, I have so much planned for this year. I've fallen back a little bit just because of overtime at work, but we have a new system going where I think I'll be doing a lot less overtime and so I can focus on the channel a little bit more. There's a lot more Blender content to be coming your way. So happy animating and I'll see you guys in the next video. I don't want to get too close. That's a $450 webcam.